Happy Halloween, y'all. This week for the clinical cookout, we'll be talking about socioeconomic status. And so I want to introduce one of my favorite TikTokers, Joshua Doss, who will talk about his article that he wrote when it comes to the disparities between African Americans and other groups. So enjoy. Yeah. So I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, I thought you said you were in the gas station and your mama asked you to grab the most recent issue of Dear D Magazine and then you noticed that my article, The Economic Inefficiency of Racism, was on the front and you wanted me to tell you about it. I thought, that's what I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about it anyway. Are you a white person that considers yourself to be socially liberal but fiscally conservative? Yeah, you are. I got some really good news for you. Racist structures are extremely fiscally expensive and have a terrible return on investment. And they cost you, the American taxpayer, quite a pretty penny. A perfect example of that is the 2008 financial housing crash that tore, just tore apart white families in America. Did, did you know we wouldn't have had the housing crash if it were not for racism? Did you know that? Let me tell the story of the financial crash in 2008. We always talk about these predatory lenders and these tricky subprime mortgages that were created to fail the borrowers. But what we don't talk about is how did they learn how to do that? How did these lenders learn how to do that? They practiced that shit on black and brown communities for years, but it was cool because it was just black and brown communities at the time. It was legal, it was fine, nobody cared. All the things that created the financial crisis, right? We're talking about predatory adjustable interest rates, teaser rates, tricky underwriting practices. Black policymakers were screaming that this was happening to our communities for decades. And no one said anything. Nobody allowed, nobody cared. They just said it was black people that were struggling with shit. Nobody cared. And then what, what was the response? A fleet of well-trained predatory lenders unleashed their newfound trick on the rest of white America. We ended up with a housing crash that resulted in 19 trillion in loss of American household wealth, 8 million jobs obliterated, loss of pensions, savings, all these things white people had to suffer that got workshopped in black communities, right? And when all those institutions went under, who had to bail them out? The American taxpayer, you had to bail them out. Everybody's taxes went up by something that could have been stopped if we would have just listened to the things that were going on in the black and brown communities. It's or even when we talk about the inflated costs of college that we see right now, states started cutting public funding to keep black and brown students out of their universities, which increased the cost of college. Racism is bad economics and it creates policy blind spots that hurt white people too. All the way from racially biased and an inflated criminal justice system that rounds up more black and brown bodies than it should, that eventually cost the American taxpayer $300 billion. How do you think them prisoners eat? How do you think they got health care? That costs you money. To discriminatory lending practices, black female owned businesses are the fastest growing businesses in America. But when racist lenders don't give them money because they're black, they don't get to create products that will then stimulate the economies that white people live into. Any economic analysis worth its salt will tell you the playbook to fiscal conservatism should begin with ending systemic racism in America. It is just good economics.